the Art of Teaching program was an incredible gift I gave myself. Um, I allowed myself to return to the most dynamic educational environment I had been a part of. I had completed my undergraduate degree here seven years earlier. I was thrilled to be back in conversation circles and to be guided to meaningful experiences and readings um, by the gentle, engaging, and knowledgeable Mary, Maggie, and Sarah. I could not imagine going through a program any less intimate, and I realized for a second time that this truly was a living model of the ideals I hold for education. I have always been moved by the emphasis at Sarah Lawrence to delve deeply into a study. And within that, there is an importance placed on introducing experiences that are rich enough to allow, um, sorry, rich enough to allow people many different levels at which to engage, a trust in students to handle materials as well as difficult and or big ideas, a belief that people learn through their connection and communication with peers and teachers, and a conviction that students should shape their own educational experience by articulating their own interests and questions. The combination of class discussions and student teaching provided so much food for thought. I was moved by all of the consideration given to emergent curriculum and felt like I witnessed that level of responsiveness as possible within the forest classroom where I was an assistant teacher with Millie. A whole exploration of volcanoes and dragons emerged from our observations of sandbox play. I valued the encouragement we received to look for the strengths of each child before us, to use that as an entry point when attempting to support a child as she or he faces a difficult task or experience. While working alongside two wonderful teachers in two different New York City public schools, some of the questions that were beginning to percolate centered around the relationship between the individual and the group within a classroom. <coughs> I find that I still wrestle with how to meet both the needs of each individual and the needs of a group, both in terms of academic and social emotional needs, especially now in a classroom with 28 students. Um, since completing the Art of Teaching program seven years ago, I've been teaching sixth grade students, first with many of the people in the room <laughs> um, at the Elysian Charter School in Hoboken, second as one of the founding teachers at Fannie Lou Hamer Freedom Middle School in the Bronx, and currently at Brooklyn School for Collaborative Study. Um, for my four years at um, BCS, I've been in a co-teaching situation where I'm the special education teacher. As a sixth grade teacher, I feel like I have often needed to recalibrate, in no small part because I feel so challenged by adolescent <coughs> expressions of dissatisfaction and their, generally speaking, argumentative nature. <laughs> um, I quickly had to face that I could not structure my classroom like an SLC seminar, and that being gentle and knowledgeable was not always enough. While I try to keep a calm, kind tone, I realized that I was going to have to move out of what was comfortable for me to meet the needs of many of my students. Often, my students seemed to respond to my tone as permissiveness. In the Bronx, I remember sitting with one student, Damon, who had challenged that I did not respect him. In essence, because I had questioned his decision to climb over the furniture. <laughs> it took a lot for me to counter, I am showing my respect for you by holding you responsible to a commitment we all made within this classroom community. I would not be showing you respect if I allowed you to do whatever you want at any given moment. I feel like I am still six years later struggling with figuring out the most effective way to set limits and build a mutual respect with an age known for testing and questioning authority. 
Diamond, a student in my class this year, responded instantly to participating in individualized reading conferences, having the opportunity to discuss and write about her reading selections, she became increasingly invested and read more voraciously. I didn't recognize the transformation until I saw her IEP in which her fifth grade teacher identified her as reading at a second grade level. I asked Diamond about this as she sat reading her 500 page book. She reported that in her previous school she hated reading and pretended that she couldn't do it well, but was motivated <laughs> by the literate culture in the, in the classroom and excited by the options in our classroom and school libraries. At both Elysian and Fannie Lou, working within a team of Art of Teaching graduates, we had work time structured in our schedule. At Elysian, my students were the pioneer class, and they were very practiced with handling materials and following their own passions. I look back fondly on many of the projects they presented by the end of the year. One boy fashioned a piece of armor after researching medieval weaponry, and another, obsessed with the Yankees, built a model baseball field. <laughs> When I went to Fannie Lou Middle School, it was certainly challenging to introduce the idea to children who had not been given the opportunity to play or to initiate their own projects in school before. We had to ask, how do we help those who, used, who are used to worksheets and desks in rows handle cubes and an open-ended investigation? We tried facilitating investigations with materials to meet given challenges and introduced new materials slowly. We asked students to write up work time proposals to encourage them to envision that they could create a Lego structure over time. One day, Nancy, who was the principal of Fannie Lou High School, came to visit our classroom and was ecstatic when she learned that our students were measuring objects for themselves using rulers. <laughs> she commented that this would mean that her high school teachers would no longer be the first to present rulers to their students. Nancy's enthusiasm was a wake-up call. We were busy feeling frustrated that our students were not able to use rulers with accuracy but Nancy was looking at a larger picture. She wanted us to see that what seemed like a baby step to us was a meaningful shift for our students. We were placing a trust in our students, believing that they could use rulers to find the perimeter and area of objects, whereas previous teachers had not taken the risk of allowing students to handle rulers. Of all the teaching I've done at BCS, my favorite experience and the highlight of many of our students' sixth grade year was working on Shakespeare's Julius Caesar after studying ancient Rome. While in many ways this was a rather traditional curricular decision, we were stunned at the riches we found <coughs> in the experience. For two years, we devoted several months to working with the language of the play examining themes of friendship and persuasion, rehearsing lines and scenes, drawing storyboards and settings, envisioning and writing for characters in scenes that were not in the play itself. It was a place where we were able to weave in a lot of choice and create many different opportunities for students to engage and reflect on this challenging human story and work of literature. The process so moved our students that they began referring to one another by their respective characters' names <laughs> and reenacted scenes using chess sets during lunch. I know that to be a teacher is always to be a work in progress. I feel that all the work I did within the Art of Teaching program has prepared me for the level of improvisation required in any classroom. The improvisation is a human one and all players are asked to listen and respond to one another. Of course, the improvisation all takes place within a structure. 
requiring the thoughtful development of routines, the organization of resources and materials, and the organization of a workspace. Then, of course, comes the key responsibility of presenting opportunities to build up social, emotional, and academic skill while pondering big questions. 